All right, guys, just got out of air gas. I've been to three welding places. They don't have my stuff. So anyway, on the way home, we're gonna do a podcast about how to find a propane tank, what size is best for me, you know, that kind of thing. Where to get, how to get started with your propane tank stick burner build. So anyway, bear with me as I drive across town, try not to get killed and do a podcast. You're listening to the Pitmaster Secrets Podcast. So we're going to talk about today uh, how to how to get started with your stick burner uh, build using a propane tank, right? Anyway, uh, you know I get a lot of questions about this because you know first of all there's let's just face it there's quite a lot of uh, uh, hesitation or fear about you know dealing with propane tanks and stuff like that. I want to first off say this that. You don't have to build it out of a propane tank. You can build it out of other stuff. You can just use brand new metal if you want. Um, we're not necessarily recommending that you buy a propane tank to build your smoker out of, but we want to at least, uh, you know, the people that are dead set and determined to, to do so, to buy a propane tank, we want to at least pave the ground for success and, uh, you know, help those people uh, do it safely. So we're gonna cover a couple of topics here. Um, I gotta look at my notes. Uh, where to find one? So the first point we're gonna make is where to find one. So uh, you can always just go start contacting propane tank companies, and this is honestly probably your safest bet. Um, not all propane tank companies will sell their tanks because they actually send them off and get them refurbished. Um, because usually the tank isn't bad. They just, you know, need painted, fixed up, you know, maybe valves replaced, stuff like that. And so they can just turn it in as a core and then they can get a new one back from the refurbisher. Um, but if you can find a propane tank company that will sell you one, honestly, the reason that I would go that route is because, yeah, it's gonna cost a little bit more money, but they're already gonna have the propane burnt out of it for you. They're gonna have the valves removed because it's part of their uh, policy. And uh, you know they're not going to send you down the road with a with a, a vessel that's got propane in it. They're just not going to do that. There's hazmat laws and stuff like that for transportation. So uh, you know that's a good place to start. The second place you could look for a tank is just online search. Now there's a couple of companies out there in the United States that do refurbish propane tanks. Those people will sell you a tank, and it's darn affordable. Um, you know, you can search around and find those companies if you want. Um, that's a really good direction to go because they're already going to have the valves removed. You know, there's not going to be any pressure necessarily in the tank. There might be some vapor, but no pressure. Um, so and it's probably been sitting for a while like that. So that's a good route to go. Um, you know, you could, on as far as an online search goes, you could use like Craigslist and things like that, but you might want to be careful because a lot of those, like I say, the valves will still be in them. There could be pressure in the tank, um, and it is actually illegal to haul a tank with the valves in it and pressure in it um, unless you have a hazmat certification, like a hazmat, you know, truck driver license. Um, so anyway... Uh, that's that's a couple of things to keep uh, to keep in mind whenever you're doing this. Now, as far as trying to figure out like what size is best for you for your build, um, you know, there's a couple of things to to keep in mind. Uh, first of all, how much food are you going to be cooking? Like, is a 120, which is only 24 by like about 63, is a 115 or a 120 gallon tank even big enough for you? Um, how many how many levels of cooking racks can you fit in there? Um, if you're gonna do a case of pork butts, that would be plenty. But if you're doing like some of these guys that we know that do fundraisers or catering events or anything like that, and they wind up cooking a lot of pork butts at one time, maybe three or four cases at once, uh, that little pit's not big enough unless you wanna do shifts. So, you know, kind of take that into consideration, a good rule of thumb, um, if you wanna be adequately prepared and have you know plenty of room for expansion I usually tell you to factor in about uh, you know about uh, one square foot per pork butt you know that's that's room for a pork butt and a few inches around it um, for airflow and stuff 
So you figure up your cooking rack space that you would get in that vessel and uh, you know divide by 144, which is 144 square inches per foot, um, square foot. So anyway, that's a good way to do that. Um, the second thing you got to kind of think about is like, how are you going to transport this thing? Like, uh, after you get your cooker built and you get this thing, is it going to be on a trailer? Is it going to be on a stand? Something like that. Like, you don't want to have to build this thing so big and then go out and buy a new truck to be able to pull the thing with. So that's another thing to kind of think about, like, um, in all honesty, you know, if you buy a 500 gallon tank and you plan on cooking at Uncle Joe's for the weekend for a family gathering or something, um, you're going to have to move it somehow. So you want to make sure that, you know, it's not too big for whatever means of transportation you have. That sounds pretty simple, but a lot of people don't think about it. Um, you know, storage of the vessel, of the cooker when it's done. Um, you want to make sure, like, if you're going to keep it in a building, you know, how big will fit in your, uh, in your shop, you know. Um, 500 gallon with a firebox by the time it's built out is going to be every bit of about 16 feet long, you know, with or without a trailer. So there you go on that. Um, the third point we want to make is, uh, you know, you're going to have to handle this propane tank somehow when, you know, in between buying it and getting it home. So you want to make sure that, you know, you've got adequate resources to be able to move the, the, the tank, um, unload it, load it, you know, lift it while you're building your, your cooker, things like that. So if you have minimal resources, uh, you know, you'll want to make sure that you get a smaller cooker to start with. Um, you know, it's not unheard of to build two or three smaller cookers if you just need stages of cooking. You know, that's not a, not a bad idea. Um, you know, because like a 120-gallon tank, if it's empty, you know, I can kind of lift up one end of that by myself. You know, it's, it's not that heavy, but a 500-gallon, you're going to need machinery a gantry or something to lift that with um so anyway that's a little bit of, of stuff to think about and then hauling it home like we talked about a minute ago you know there's some hazmat concerns um you know if if uh you, you definitely don't want to haul a tank it's it is illegal to haul a tank that's got the valves in it um and it's not noted as you know junk or scrap or decommissioned um, you know, you have to have hazmat certification to be able to haul any kind of a vessel that is capable of holding pressure in it and uh, flammable gases and stuff like that. Um, you know, and then you need to make sure you got a trailer that's big enough to haul the thing too. So you could probably haul an empty three or empty 500 gallon tank on a 3,500 pound trailer to get it home. But, you know, when you build out that trailer for your cooker to be on, it's going to have to be a bit heavier trailer. You know, we do a single axle 6,000 pound trailer is what we do. Um, you know, that way it's not the weight of the cooker that's going to kill your trailer. It's the bridge aprons and potholes and bad highways generally that's going to damage your cooker more than anything. Um, so we put a heavy axle under there or we'll go tandem. So... Anyway, guys, hey, I hope you found this helpful. Um, it was kind of a quick one. Uh, we'd like for you to follow us on uh, other social media, but also, if you don't mind, whatever platform you're watching or listening to this podcast on, it'd sure help us out if you give us a review. Just click the old review tab or leave a comment. Um, like and subscribe. Make sure you hit the old ding-a-ding bell thing down there and get notifications when another one goes up. So if there's anything we can ever do to help you out, get you started on your smoker build, all you gotta do is just find us on social media or call us at 573-612-1315 and uh, let us know how we can help you out. We wanna see you be successful with your smoker build. Anyway, till next time, see you later.